good morning. It's uh, truly a pleasure to be here and might even be more of a pleasure to be there in Orlando, but uh, we're doing the best we can. I'd like to talk to you today about laser additive manufacturing of a grade 91 steel for affordable nuclear reactor components. So this is a project that was funded, that is being funded by advanced methods for manufacturing out of DOE nuclear energy. And I have a, a host of collaborators working with me at Los Alamos, helping with the microstructural characterization um, are Calvin Lear and Osmond Elatwani. And at uh, University of California, Berkeley, they're also helping with uh, characterization as well as uh, mechanical testing, uh, Dr. Peter Hoseman and Jeff Bickle. At Optimec, which is uh, where they're, we're actually making the materials, uh, that's led by Tom Leinert, who's the overall lead of this project. And uh, at Penn State University, uh, where they're leading the model development, it's uh, Professor Tarasankar Debroy and Tuhin Mukherjee. So, uh, with that, and I'll just continue on. Uh, let me just start off with a brief outline. I'll give you a little bit of background on uh, uh, the reason for this uh, research and then a little bit about the project plan. And then I'll get into some of our uh, results on tempering studies, some of the model or the model development. Uh, some of the initial uh, results on added manufacturing of grade 91. And then I'll summarize, and this is actually about the middle of our project, so I'll really talk about a little bit of future work that will be happening also. So a little bit of background. Uh, the material that we're working with is called grade 91 or modified 9 chrome, 1 moly, vanadium, and niobium. Uh, it's a second generation creep resistant uh, fritic or tempered martensitic steel. Nine, roughly 9% 9 chrome, 1% moly, and 0.1% carbon are the most important uh, elements with the vanadium and niobium helping with uh, a little bit of improvement in high temperature strength. Um, for, uh, when you use uh, grade 91, in order to get the combination of strength, ductility, creep resistance, and radiation tolerance required for service, the Martin site in the grade 91 needs to be tempered. Uh, if you want to optimize the properties for reactor applications, then you'll have to, after you weld it, do a post-weld heat treatment, and that's really not practical, so they have to do special welding techniques, uh, especially for a large part, such as a temper bead method that's shown on the right here in my slide, may be used to, to actually temper it while you're uh, welding it. So what we're proposing is sort of a similar idea with laser additive manufacturing, you could use that to fabricate reactor components with engineered microstructures that provide equal or even improved components to that of wrought, with, wrought components. But even further, what we'd like to do is set up the laser added manufacturing parameters so that we can tailor it so that we effectively in situ temper during the deposition, sort of like the temper be the welding shown to the right. So the project plan uh, involves developing a model, the laser added manufacturing model using the Johnson Melavrabi JMA uh, framework, um, doing some isothermal tempering studies so that we can, these have been done now, uh, so that we can, on rot samples, so we can calibrate the JMA equation. Uh, when we do the laser added manufacturing using IR camera or beam profiling inputs that goes into the uh, process, goes into the process model, and then after we make the materials doing mechanical testing with large or microscale samples, if the microscale would be for the uh, irradiated materials, and doing irradiation testing with either ions for high dose or protons for low dose, and then final uh, microstructural characterization of the microstructure of the additive manufacturing material, but then of course the uh, radiation defects formed uh, during ion radiation. So the rough project plan is uh, shown here. Um, we're starting with the tempering experiments for the model and then characterizing those materials and then putting that into the added manufacturing process model, make our first samples, uh, characterize those, characterize the hardness on those. If that looks uniform or uh, then, you know, maybe we've actually gotten to the right conditions right off the, that, which uh, would be really lucky. Uh, but if it's not, we go back to the AM process model and we actually make more, more samples, uh, varying the parameters a bit. 
to try and get to the uh, the uniform um, microstructure like, for example, you get in a, in a raw material. And then once we get to the rose right conditions, we fabricate more samples, we characterize those and also do radiation testing and eventually use that process to make a prototype uh, for a nuclear reactor to show uh, really how this could be used. Recent results are, are just summarized here. We're going to talk about tempering experiments that we started off with, a little bit on the model development and, and the process by which uh, we'll do that, and then uh, summarize some of the initially candidate manufactured materials by Optimec with uh, characterization of opti optical microscopy and SEM. So the tempering experiments, um, so the table showing the tempering experiments is shown here. There's a pretty large uh, different range of conditions. Uh, we um, did normalization at 1040, 1140, and 1240 degrees C. And then we tempered at temperatures between 690, 745, and 790 degrees C to try and get conditions like what we'll see in the additive manufacturing runs. And the tempering times were done from zero. So as normalize all the way out to sort of an infinite time, um, all the way out to 168 hours. And in, in all those cases, we did optical microscopy and also uh, measured the hardness in, in these materials. And this was all done at uh, UC Berkeley uh, by Jeff Bickle. <clears throat> and a little bit of a summary of that is shown here. On the left is just a typical microstructure with your uh, tempered Martin Siddick uh, um, Lasts within a uh, your prior austenite grains on the left that it's around uh, 20 to 30 microns in size, and then in summary, uh, all of that hardness data is shown to the right. Uh, there you can see that with the first tempering, after just two hours, you get the largest change in hardness, dropping from about 400 uh, down to a range of. 270 to 200, and of course, the largest drop is with the highest temperature temper at 790 degrees C. And then from there, it gradually drops with increased tempering all the way out to 20. And you can see here at 168 hours at the highest temperature, it even gets down to about 172 um, HV. So that's data that's going to go into the model development. So the methodology for the model development is shown here. Uh, we're modeling a direct energy deposition laser uh, uh, laser deposition process, which is same the same as the laser additive manufacturing process that uh, I talked about from the beginning. And so that's used with a powder feeding nozzle and a laser that melts the powder as it actually drops to the part shape to make a to build up a part. And there's a, a few parts of the model. There's a part that's actually modeling what's the temperature and what conditions does the material see with a heat transfer and fluid flow model. And then there's a part that's sort of taking that data and saying, well, given that the material sees that condition, what sort of hardness would we predict that the material will have? And that's using the JMA parameters. And from that, we could predict the hardness and understand uh, the effective in situ tempering on the hardness that we'd actually uh, get in the material. And this just shows you uh, some of the 3D transient temperature and velocity distributions predicted in a uh, in a, um, a tempered Martin Siddick steel. Uh, you can see the melt, melting molten area as the uh, laser comes across the material and then the reju reduced temperature uh, behind it as it goes across and, and puts a layer of material across the sample and the conditions for the laser additive manufacturing, which would be sort of a typical condi condition you might use, are shown here to the right. <clears throat> so given that, then we can predict something like we show here, uh, where um, you get an initial spike in temperature as the uh, first uh, powder is, is laying you know, from a point in the material. First powder comes down, you get a spike in temperature and it cools. And then as the next layer goes above it or next to it, you get an increase in temperature, but not as much, a little bit less and a little less as it sort of evens out with increased uh, time. And from that, then you can predict for each deposition of the layer, what hardness we predict, you know, starting at the higher hardness and then going down with uh, more tempering in the material. And if you want to see more details on it, we just had a paper that was accepted for publication in Actimet uh, on predicting the 
properties of an H13 steel uh, using uh, this type of model. So now we're also making some progress in actually making some materials at Optimec. They uh, made, um, did three different runs. One where we used no preheat on the plate, which is shown to the left. And then one where we used 100 C preheat for the plate shown to the middle. And one where we used a 200 C preheat on the right. And now we're uh, cutting up and uh, analyzing those um, materials with optical and SEM and eventually a mechanical testing on those materials also. So an overall summary of uh, those three different um, um, runs or heats are shown here. On the left, uh, what you see is the material that uh, um, had no preheat. And there we did optical microscopy sort of macro images of the top. You can see the layers and how they're laid on the on the top of the material, that's sort of the last ratchet that was cut through the middle. So you can see how those layers are laid. And if you look at that spacing, it's about uh, 300 micron spacing between layers. And that's shown all the way across. On <clears throat> below it, you can actually see the layers in the build direction. And then on the right and moving over, it's the same images of the layers with 100 C preheat and the 200 C preheat. So, um, <clears throat> Those overall looks, uh, overall, they all look uh, fairly similar. Uh, when you start to look at it in higher magnification with optical microscopy on the left and EBSD um, imaging with SEM on the right, you can see there's a combination of uh, some very, uh, some laugh microstructure indica indicative of, of some Martin or Martin site or tempered Martin site. And uh, you can also see perhaps some uh, ferrite in the background also. So uh, to summarize, uh, that's where we've gotten so far. Uh, to summarize, we've now done the uh, tempering experiments on completed on the grade 91 samples with a range of normalization temperatures and tempering times. The data that we've gotten from that will be used to uh, develop the JMA parameters for the model so we can predict hardness from added manufactured uh, microstructures. We've made now some samples of grade 91 uh, of grade 91 at Optimec and we have a 0, 100C and 200C preheat and we've started the characterization on those materials. We're, like I said, we're about the middle of the project right now. For the future work is we're going to be starting to do mechanical testing on those materials. We'll do ion radiations on sort of the optimized uh, um, parameters um, that we develop in, on this material. And then eventually we'll be um, fabricating an actual uh, reactor prototype. So uh, with that, I would be happy to take any questions.